Welcome back to the Women's Success Summit. We're going to let Stacy get her video up and working here. Are you guys having an amazing time? I feel like we've got so much good content going on um, and you are in for even more. So I cannot say enough good things about Stacy. She has, you guys, 20 best-selling books. Can I get like a little clappy hands for that? That is a huge accomplishment. 20. She's a professional speaker um, and her vision is to help men and women empower themselves to overcome their obstacles and move forward in life, to rediscover their passion, redefine their purpose, and to gain the courage to act. Stacy was chosen and was one of the top 10 entrepreneurs in 2023 at Apple News. Um, and she's been featured in... Uh, insider business insider yahoo news and her posts have gone viral with over 17 million views so in addition to being an entrepreneur she's also been a guest on the dr oz show five times and worked personally with ariana huffington and other celebrities she's been on tv shows the news like guys she knows her stuff she has definitely been around and has accomplished a lot and she's here today to share with us how we can discover the skills and strategies to reach our goals, achieve success, and live the life that we deserve. So would you guys do me a favor? And in the chat, I want you to post in, I deserve it. I <laughs> yes, deserve it. Do. You got to believe that for you to be able to go after it. So Stacy, we are excited for you and I'm going to let you take over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. I appreciate it. Today, I'm going to show you how to become a successful woman. Okay, first of all, did you know that 42% of all U.S. businesses are owned by women? 13 million women. That's insane. Women-owned businesses employ over 9.4 million workers. Women are three percentage points more likely to start a business than men. Women rock. Come on now. Do you want to know how to achieve your goals and become successful? If so, the information I'm going to share with you today will help you on your journey to success. I'm going to share my story from where I was to where I am today and how I learned from it all. Okay, so when I was five, you know, life wasn't all peaches and cream for me. My um, father and my mother had heard a gurgling sound from my bedroom. So they walked in to see what was going on, and I was turning blue and in a grand mal seizure. They immediately rushed me to the hospital. Previously, I had an ear infection, a virus, nothing major. But when I got to the hospital, they found that the virus had turned into encephalitis and had traveled to my brain. I was induced into a coma, and my parents uh, were at the hospital, and a doctor walked over, and he said, most likely if your daughter comes out of this coma, She's probably going to have uh, severe brain damage or she's going to be paraplegic. My father, who comes from Greece, um, he came from a small island and he was praying to a statue that stood in front of his church. And he was by my bedside praying that I would be okay. And on the fourth day, when he was praying, he looked up and a teardrop rolled from my eyes. And I opened my eyes up, and the first thing I asked for was McDonald's french fries. And I wasn't paraplegic, and I didn't have severe brain damage, but I did have epilepsy. And life was like a roller coaster ride, to say the least. And when I got into college, it was even uh, more worse than it was previously. The late night studying, going through, you know, trying to get the good grades, I was just under a lot of stress, and my seizures increased more. I got to the point where I didn't even know if I was going to be able to finish college. You know, I had all these dreams, all these aspirations. I wanted to become a successful woman. I pictured myself working in New York in some kind of big job, you know, having martinis on a Friday night and, you know, buying expensive shoes and pocketbooks. I had this, these dreams, these dreams that I wanted so bad. And so one day I wrote a letter to the Epilepsy Foundation. They had a magazine and I said, how do people cope with this disorder? How do people get through life? I said, I needed help. There was no help back then. Well, to my surprise, three to 400 letters came to my house. 
And people from all over the United States and Canada shared their stories and they shared how they went through it and how they cope with it. And it was inspiring. For the first time in my life, I knew I wasn't alone. And I had the, I realized that I could actually do it because there were people just like me and they were going and they were, they were succeeding. So why couldn't I? So I took their advice and I created a regiment, a lifestyle for myself. And I was able to graduate college. And then right after college, I, I got a big corporate job in the city. I was living the life. I had a limo picking me up in the morning, you know, just out of college, you know, I, you know, life couldn't be better. And then one day I was in the hallway and I felt a funny feeling and I said, oh no, I'm going to have a seizure. So I'm looking around, I'm trying to find out where I could go, where nobody would see me, but there was no place to go. I ended up falling on the floor and I had a seizure and I was conscious. I could see what was going on, but I was frozen in the seizure. And a producer just stepped right over me and he kept walking and I'm looking up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe he just walked over me and didn't even help me. And I just got up and I went back to my, my job. And then 30 minutes later, a co-producer came over and said, oh, Stacy, I'm so sorry, but you don't meet the requirements that we're looking for. Now I knew I was doing a superb job. So I knew it wasn't because I didn't meet the requirements. It's because they saw me have a seizure. But you know what? I wasn't going to let me get it down. You know, I, I walked out of there with my head up high and I said, you know what? I have a dream. I have a dream. And my passion and my dream is to become a success. And I wasn't going to let anything stop me. So I walked out of there. I wasn't sure where I was headed, but I was going to make sure that I became a success. So I started my own little business. I was good at writing. So I started a freelance business and it blew up. I was working with successful people, contacting me, asking me to write pieces. And then one day this herbalist contacted me. He said, I need a lot of research. Can you do this research? And I said, sure. So I started researching. And a lot of these things were really interesting to me. He was teaching how to live life naturally, how to use alternative methods to heal your body. And I said, wow, some of these things apply to me. So I actually started using some of the suggestions that I was learning about. My seizures went from 12 to 9 to 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, to the point where I was controlled. So with the combination of medication and change in my life, I was able to control my seizures. So then I decided, you know what? If it's helping me, why not help the world? So I finished, I wrote my book. When I took all those letters from all those people, I put it in a book, I wrote about the regiment, about the lifestyle changes that I did, and I put it in my first book, Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. The book became a bestseller because back then there weren't many books on epilepsy. And then one day I went in my e-box and somebody said, I was on the verge of suicide, but I found your book in Barnes and Nobles. I read it and I'm following your regiment and now I have a purpose. I'm going to live I, could, I don't want to give my life up. Thank you, Stacy. You saved my life. And right then, I realized the wisdom of words could be so powerful. And I took my strengths, I found my purpose, and I followed my dream. And from there, I wrote another bestseller. I created a website that blew up. I my, took my dreams, my aspiration, my passion, my purpose, and I turned it into my career. I took a tragedy, turned it into something positive, and now I'm helping others. And I'm profiting from it also. Because someone should profit from their, from their accomplishments. If you're giving a service to somebody and you're helping them, you should be entitled to monetize. Now, I want to teach you something. So we're going to go back to the slides for a second. Now, here are 10 real takeaway action tips to apply immediately to help you achieve your goals and succeed. Because I know there's so many people out there that want to be successful businesswomen, but they're not, either they don't know how or they're struggling to get to the point where they want to. They're working and working and working. And then at the end of the year, they're not where they want to be. 
Well, the first thing you need to do is be committed. Commitment is key to success. Commitment means that you're doing what you say you will, even when it's hard. It's not giving up when things get tough or putting your goals on hold because of other things in life that may be more important. Commitment means being consistent with your efforts over time so that one day soon, all those small steps forward add up into one giant leap towards achieving what seemed the impossible before nothing became, became possible within reach and then some. You thought, well, you know, it's impossible, it's impossible. But little steps come to giant steps, and giant steps come to becoming the person and the lifestyle you wanted. Commitment is a daily choice that must be made regardless of how often we fall off track, our journey towards goals. And it doesn't mean that we should give up hope and stop trying altogether. Now, I can't tell you how many times that I personally felt like I moved two steps forward and I got knocked down two steps back. Life was not peaches and creams for me. Every time I felt like I was headed forward to success, I ended up going two steps back. Now, learning from the journey. This is so important. This is really important. And one of the things that we have to understand is learning from your mistakes. Your mistakes can be a great source of knowledge if you're willing to look at them objectively. If you want to learn how to become successful, be open-minded enough to accept your feedback and constructive criticism without taking it personally, and then taking time to reflect back what went wrong so you won't repeat those mistakes for next time. Now, I am one for this. I am I am not one to actually take Constructive criticism is so great. People tell me, and I'm like, but then I realize, you know what? They're only helping me. And even though I might not always like what they have to say, I actually take it with a grain of salt. And then I reflect back on it and I say, you know what? They have a point. And then I try to reconstruct things. And the one of the biggest things that I've realized is that the people given constructive criticism, if they're ahead of the game, then obviously they know what they're doing. So take advice from people because sometimes what we think our audience wants is not really because what we like may not be what the audience likes. So we need to understand our audience and take constructive criticism from others and use it for our own benefit. Now, one thing is having fun along the way. I can't tell you so much about how important this is because having fun is essential. As you work hard to achieve your goals, it's easy to forget about the most important person and that's ourselves. We tend to actually, we tend to actually forget about ourselves. We get so caught up in the business because the business is our baby. That's, that's actually what you, you work so hard that the business is our baby. And what happens is, is that we forget about the most important person, you, me, you know. And what happens is we end up getting business burnout because we keep working and we keep working and we're not enjoying our time. We're putting all these endless hours into our business and we get so burnt out that we can't focus. Our clarity is off. And we're not able to actually move ahead because when, once you get so burnt out and you're not focusing on renewing yourself, then if you can't take care of yourself properly, how are you going to take care of your business? How do you go into and, and do well when you're, when you're drained, when you're tired, when you're not focused and you're probably short tempered and have a, have a low, low temperament because You're so tired and and drained that it affects your mood. So the first thing you need to do is actually put yourself as your first priority. Putting yourself as your first priority is so important. So it's good to take time out and do the things you love, whether it's taking a nature walk, going on a vacation. You know, one person might like to go on vacations and travel. Another person might like to exercise. Another person might like to listen to music on the beach. Whatever works for you, that's what's important. 
because that renewing yourself and recharging your body it, and your mind, it's all connected. So when you release and you put hang up the coat for a little while and you're not focusing on your business and you're focusing on the beauty of life, you're renewing your mind, you're cleansing your mind, you're cleansing your body, you're building, your immune system is building up because you have time to recharge yourself. So it's always important to do that, to make sure that you put yourself first before anything else. There's always tomorrow. It took a long time for me to realize this because I can't tell you how many times I overworked myself. But if you work and you let you give yourself time to renew and you hang up the coat at a certain time and say, there's always tomorrow, it works. It helps. And you actually do better in your business. Now, another thing is thinking positively. Now, things are going to happen. Problems are going to occur. You know, you're going to have, you know, when you have your own business, nothing goes, nothing flows sweet. There's always problems that are going to occur, but think positively and don't give up. If we throw out the negativity and we forget about the little things, you know, what could happen, what might happen. Oh my God. You know, forget about those little problems. Focus on the present. Remember, we need to focus on the present and we need to make plans for our future. And anything you put your mind to, you can achieve. You can achieve it. What, there's no reason that anybody should underestimate their abilities. If you have enough sense and enough of determination to want to be a success, you could be a success. You need to believe in yourself, have the confidence that you could do anything. And positivity, the power of positivity goes such a long way. I always believe, call out to the universe. Tell the universe what you want and the universe shall, shall answer. Keep a positive outlook and that will strengthen you. That will give you courage. And when you have strength and courage, you have high self-esteem. And that goes a long way. And I also, you need to also change your perspective. Sometimes, you know, I've realized this in my own life, you know, we work on our business and it's doing okay, but it's not doing great. Either you have to change it and change the way you're doing things, or maybe this isn't the right business for you. Maybe you need to focus on a specific niche that you're good at and you, that you can actually profit off of. Because sometimes many business owners will, will start with one business. They'll be good at it. They're doing good, but they're bringing in the wrong audience. They're bringing in clients that don't have the money to pay them what they, are, what they deserve to be paid because their limit is oh so much. So you need to focus on what businesses bring in the right audience, the right clients, the right, con the right cons customers that will actually bring in a good cash flow. And even people, you know, Alex Hamozi even said though, you know, this goes against what I just said, but even people who don't have money, sometimes if you sell the product right, they will want it. But if you keep in a business that's not making money, it's time to think about what else will work for you. So always keep your perspectives and your options open, but also remember that you can't focus on a million things at once. Focus on one niche and put all your energy in that one business. And you need to start a platform. Those big rocks, just think of a jar. You need big rocks, then you need medium-sized rocks, then pebbles, and then sand fills the top. So that's going to take time to build a good business. A lot of people think it happens all at once. You know, they want to see results really quickly, but it's not going to happen overnight. You do need that, like we said, the commitment, the hard work, the determination. And once before I go, I'm going to just tell people to count on themselves. Don't realize that, don't expect others to do your work for you. Mm -hmm. Count on yourself because it's yourself that's going to bring you the success that you deserve. 
Yeah. And trust yourself too. I love that. Count on yourself, trust yourself, believe that all the things that you've been dreaming of that you are going to become capable and qualified for in the process. I love it. Stacey, thank you so much for being with us and for sharing all of your wisdom. Um, you are giving away a free 60 minute coaching session, which is super generous. Uh, would you want to say what's, what's an example of a, a result that you feel like you can create with them in that session? I found that so many clients really need um, a little help in empowerment. You know, sometimes I think a lot of people, we underestimate ourselves. We don't think we're worth as much as we are. And a lot of people underscale themselves and they work so hard and they're not getting paid what they deserve to be paid. And by working on your self-esteem, by working on creating short-term and long-term goals, by understanding what you are worth, and having the ability and the strength to go out there and get it, you can actually become the person that you want to become and achieve those numbers that you want to achieve. Love it. All right. Make sure that you go grab that free 60 minute coaching session. And while you're on the gift page, grab all the gifts from all the speakers, because there are literally thousands of dollars worth of value that are being given to you from our amazing, brilliant strategist here. And while we're swapping, Find that one thing that's your takeaway from this session that you want to make sure you remember. And we will be right back with uh, me as your, as your trainer. So we'll see you again in just a minute.